All right. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm here with a special guest today. Tony from Fusion. Yeah, best gem, bro. Absolutely phenomenal. They've been showing mad love to us here. He literally just came down. Got like the light extension. We have um, what the lights, the dumbbells, the sign. A lot of the equipment in there, you guys see in the YouTube videos, he pretty much provided for us. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. My pleasure. And then, uh, well, so you guys just had, I guess we'll just get right into it, honestly. So obviously he's a very successful uh, entrepreneur, gym. Like, what would you call yourself? I guess just like a... Serial entrepreneur. Okay. Got you. Yeah. So I'm curious. So, I mean, you told me briefly, but I'm sure a lot of people, because obviously I've been going under following, a lot of people are curious probably on how you went about the whole, because like you, you kind of doing something that people haven't seen before in the whole gym space. Yeah. Because like you basically like made it's like it's like lifetime fitness on on steroids, <laughs> but like with a mod like a it's made for people gym. like us. You know, what yeah. I mean? like if you go into like a lifetime, your corporate big box gyms, bro, they're like super stuffy. Yeah, you know what I mean they're super corporate. There's no vibe. There's no energy. There's no culture. That's you know? the big thing. And when no you go culture. there. Like you're afraid of making too much noise or you have to kind of like walk on eggshells. So I built a place for people like us. People, when I say people like us, I mean people that are super into fitness, people that are about that fitness lifestyle. It's not just a gym, it's an experience. So explain like how you even started. I remember you briefly told me in COVID, you used to sell like those adjustable dumbbells. Yeah. Is that what started? Like, is that, what's the first item you sold related to fitness, I guess, and how you went about it? I mean, the first thing I ever sold related to fitness was personal training. You know? okay. So a lot of people... Uh, they recently just you know found out about me, but I've been at this shit for like 16 years, bro. I started in my journey when I was 18 years old working at LA Fitness. Wow. You know, I feel like all people in the fitness industry, we all started at either LA Fitness or mm -hmm. back in the days to be Valley Fitness. Um, but that's where I started at LA Fitness, selling personal training. I did that for like the first two years. I was like a top performer at LA Fitness, and I moved over to Retro top performer there. And eventually, anyone that's in the fitness space, they all want to open their own gym. You know, I'm yeah. sure you want to open your own gym one day. 100%. You know what I mean? Everybody has that dream. And so, um, I started reverse engineering how I, you know, to actually build a gym, right? So, like, uh, I'm a big person, I'm a big firm believer in education, just not formal education. Because formal education will earn you a living, self-education will earn you a fortune. A lot of people, they go down that, you know, beaten down path but if you take the same path as everyone else, you're going to get the exact same result as everyone else. If you want more than other people, you got to do more than other people. So education is not a time in life. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a way of life. It's a good lesson. You know what I mean? So, Easy clip right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're not uh, for sure. So, I mean, the biggest thing is, so I started educating myself. I started reverse engineering. Right, how am I going to go about this? Yeah. Right? A lot of people, they have a dream. It might be to start a restaurant, might be to start an apparel brand, might be to start a gym. Most people aren't willing to do the work first. Prior planning prevents, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Mm -hmm. I, and that, that's a saying that I learned a very long time ago, and I also believe that prior planning prevents piss poor profits. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they start a business, but very few people they actually make any fucking money. Yeah. The reason being is they're, they're moving around in the dark. You kind of know you're going through it yourself right now, and you start Elysium. There's a lot you think you know, but there's also a lot you don't know. And as you, but you do, you kind of figure out as you go. Correct. Right? Yeah. I, I keep telling people like the. I literally keep pushing this on people like the the worst decision is an decision. So I'm just like, I learn as I go. Instead of being like scared to make a decision with like Elysium, for example, I'm just like, if I have like that slight feeling, like yo, this could be good, I just do it. Like whether it's like purchasing a shit that like we just put like a fat order, and I was yeah. like. At first, I was putting it off a little bit, and I'm like, realistically, I'm just delaying the profits because uh, if I keep waiting and to pull the trigger, but I end up pulling the trigger three weeks later, I could have had this up three weeks earlier, but I just pulled the trigger beforehand. So I'm like, the, the worst decision is the decision. You, if you just make a decision, you're better off either way if you win or you lose, because if you win, you win. If you lose, you're still better off because you learned from that decision so you don't make it the next time. You make it differently, calculate it better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, they're just afraid of failing. But what they don't really understand is that failure is a part of the process. And the big part of it is everyone, they're going about it in the dark when you don't have to. We live in an information age. Yeah. People have access to guys like you, guys like me. All you got to do is tap into a podcast, tap into a YouTube video, tap into really anything just online because you have access to millionaires, billionaires, people that have already done the thing that you want to do. Your goals and your visions and your dream and your life is not unique to you. There's 8 billion plus people on earth. 
-hmm. You're not as unique as you think. So there's people that have your problems, that have overcome your problems. All you have to do is find those people, find the blueprint, because you don't have to do this podcast, bro. You're very well off. You're set pretty much for the rest of your life. Why are you doing it? Because you want to have an impact on the life that you, you're right. living, right? You want to have impact on others. Making money is important, but having impact is just as much important to people that are successful because after you get to a certain point in life, well, what else is there? How many cars are you going to buy? How many houses are you going to buy? How many vacations are you going to go on? So people that really make it, they love to pave the road for other people. They do the same thing, yeah. So the, it's leaving like a significant impact rather than yeah. just being successful. So the information is out there. They were put out by entrepreneurs before me, before them. The whole point of it is the information is free. The application takes a whole lot of effort. Yeah. Right? And a lot of people, they have these dreams, but they're not willing to do the work to learn how to do it the right way. They'll just take a swing at bat. But you can't fucking wing your way to the top. Mm. You can't wing. You can't shoot from the hip and become a fucking champion. It doesn't so work in any other industry. You gotta calculate this shit more. Exactly. So yeah. you gotta do, you gotta put in the time, right? So the biggest thing is figuring out a plan. So I spent a lot of time online figuring out how much money I needed to build a gym. Your typical 10,000 square foot gym, you need about a million bucks. It's about $100 per square feet is what you're going to need for your build out and for your equipment. I was like, all right, well, I was at the time I was 19 years old. I'm like, I don't have a million dollars. All right, maybe I'll start off something smaller. I'll start off with a studio. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at that. I was like a 3,000 square foot studio. It was about 5,000 bucks a month between like the rent, taxes, property insurance, and then you got gas, water, electric, right? You're about six, seven Gs in, and then you need to spend like 50 bands to even build it out. I had 50 yeah. grand, I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But in life, it's not what you don't have that stops you, it's what you think you need. And it's not who you're not, it's who you think you're not. So at least I was smart enough to know, I'd be like, okay, it's not what I don't have, I just need to be more resourceful. A lot of people, they don't start because they're like, oh, I don't have the resources, I don't have the network, I don't have the money, I don't have this degree. You don't need shit, you just gotta be resourceful with what's around you. Mm -hmm. So at least I was smart enough to know that, okay, at least I have the skill sets. I know how to hire. I know how to manage. I know how to sell. I know how to build a team. I know how to build a culture. I know how to get clients. Those are the things that I have. I don't have a facility. Okay, well, there's more than one way to get something done. Let me ask you this. There's more than one way from Philly to Elysium's headquarters. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, so there's more than one way to get to your destination. Yes, there's a fast way. There's also a slow way. There's multiple ways. If one way doesn't work, just find another way. So what I did was, I went ahead and I looked at it. I'm like, what, 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 what can I do? I'm like, well, I have a skill set that most people don't have. I can sell training and I can sell a shit ton of it. So I just started cold calling every gym within 100 miles, just offering them rent to, pay, to do training in the facility. I would offer them $60,000 a year to be a trainer in the facility. Sounds like a lot of money, right? But it's not because I was going to spend 60 grand on an empty, shitty little space. I'm going to pay 60 grand to be a trainer in a 20,000 square foot gym with thousands of members and all I got to do is sell them training, walk up to them. I don't have to market, I don't have to get the clients, I don't have to maintain the equipment, yeah. I don't got to worry about shit except for my strength, which was selling training. So you paid them 60 grand a trip to be exactly. a trainer there. So I cold called probably about 100 gyms, almost every single one said no, I'm pretty much going to fuck off. But it doesn't matter how many people tell you no. All you need is one yes. Yeah. And I got the one yes. It was a, a small gym called Snap Fitness in Newcastle, Delaware. It's where I got my very, very first start. It was like 4,000 square feet, and I started paying them 40 Gs a year to be a trainer in their facility. That slowly grew from one location to two, two to three, three to four. I had like six personal training businesses. By the time I was 21, I had two in Maryland, two in Delaware, two in New Jersey. And then eventually we segued in and grew even bigger, and we got into bigger chains like Gold's Gyms. Remember, birds of a feather flock together. One gym owner knows another gym owner. Yeah. So once I got my foot in one door, I Here said, hey, do go. you know anyone else? Boom, I got my second location, then my third, then my fourth, then my fifth. And I ran that business for literally about, I'd say almost five years until I was 25. And then I still didn't have that million dollars, okay? Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, I don't have the million dollars. There's got to be an easier way. The easier way was, all right, there's people like, so the biggest thing that's gonna stop you from opening a business is not money. Money is the cheapest thing in the world. Everyone has it. Mm -hmm. It's knowing what to do. People ask me all the time, Tony, how do you raise so much money to build your gyms? It's because I can do shit nobody else can do. Mm -hmm. I can build facilities that nobody else can at a budget and a price point that no one else can. So the biggest thing is get experience underneath your belt. Um, the reason I say that is there's plenty of businesses that are for sale in America right now where people, they just want out. 
What I mean by that is, when you sign a lease, a lot of times you, when you sign a lease for a business, you're not signing for a year, you're not signing for two. You're typically signing for three to ten years. Mm -hmm. And if that business is not making money, the owner of the business is still stuck paying that rent. Uh, yeah. So you can then step in and take over that business and assume the debt. Mm. So a lot of times, so for, I'll give you a great example. The gym that I bought, they were failing. They weren't making any money. I bought my first facility. It was a million dollar facility. I bought that shit for 40 grand, bro. Wow. You're probably wondering, well, how'd you buy? In life, everyone has problems. If you can become the solution, you can make a shit ton of money. Here was the problem, right? Let me lay it out for you. The guys that built the gym, the landlord spent $400,000 on construction for it. So the tenant owed this money over the course of 10 years, but they were failing. They weren't making any money. So they defaulted on the lease. They stopped paying rent. The tenants are stuck in the lease. The landlord can sue them for that 400 Gs plus the rest of the lease for millions of dollars. The tenant also wants out of the, out of the business. So I stepped in. I said, hey, listen, my name's Tony. Here's who I am. Here's what I do. At the time, the business was set for sale for half a million dollars. But I bought that shit for 40 fucking grand. I said, here's what we're going to do. Here's what I'm doing with personal training. I'm a motherfucker that can do this. In life, you're either going to sell or be sold, right? Facts and figures are forgotten. Stories are retold. I told them the story. I said, listen, here's who I am. I started this business with $700. We're doing half a million dollars a year in personal training. In other people's gym, imagine what I could do with my own gym. So I sold the landlord that I'm a strong operator. So that was his biggest problem. Is he would, let's say he went after the tenant. He still has an empty space. He's still not collecting rent. So I walked in. I said, look, I'm going to pay the rent. I'll assume the lease. I'll give you the guarantee that he has. And I'm much better as a tenant than he is. Mm -hmm. The landlord agreed. And then the tenant, I'm like, listen, you're going to sell this equipment. It's worth 10 cents on the dollar. Right? It's just like a car. When you buy a car, you drive the shit out of it for three, four years. Guess what? You can buy a $100,000 car. Three, four years later, it's worth 30, 40 grand. Yeah. So I'm like, someone's going to come in and buy this equipment. But it's not like everyone's lining up to buy gym equipment. A wholesaler will buy it. Once they buy it, they need to store it. They need to move it. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're not going to pay you 30 cents on the dollar. They're going to pay you 10 cents on the dollar. Because they need to make money on it too. So I was like, let me come in. Get rid of your debt because you owe the landlord millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So you get to walk away from millions of dollars with the debt. You leave the equipment. The landlord assumes the equipment as a part of your settlement. Mm -hmm. And I get the gym yeah, as is. Equipment. So I put 25 grand down. I paid my first month's rent. I got my first million dollar facility for 40 fucking grand. Wow. And you can do that in every fucking industry. Bro. So how did you find, how are you, you just looked around to find, like, I guess, warehouses that could be acceptable as a training facility and then you just happen to find one where the business was failing oh, bro here's the beautiful thing right we have this wonderful machine it's called google right mm -hmm. everyone has it they have access to it but we don't value it because this shit is free yeah we, the, the problem with most people in life is they, they value things that cost money true true things that you could easily replace with more money but the things that are given to us for free our health our family our friends the fucking internet, we don't value because this shit was free. We didn't pay for it. So they don't value the information that's out there. I went on fucking Google and I just typed in gyms for sale. Wow. That's it. And I, I, it. And there was a few different websites that had a lot of gyms for sale. I looked to find one that was local to me. And then I reached out to the broker. I looked at the numbers. I'm like, wow, they're losing like 15 grand a month. It makes more sense for them to just you're hand able, me the keys. Are able to find that? You yeah. You find that they're losing money? Yeah, so when you, when you, whenever a business is for sale, you're going to get what's called a P&L. p and is your profit and loss statement. It pretty much breaks down all your expenses, your revenue, and then it'll show you the net income. Okay. So if the net income is in the red, that means that person is paying to keep this bitch open. Yeah. Not only are they not making money, they're losing money every single month out of their savings account. So if I can walk in and eliminate your debt and you get to walk away from the lease... You're going to say, fuck the investment because that's already lost. Now I'm losing money every single month. And if you can become that solution, I guarantee you they'll sign that lease over to you. And you can do that in the restaurant industry, in the laundromat industry, in the retail industry. There's so many different industries you can do that in. You just have to know what you're doing and you have to be able to sell yourself. Mm. I call it the strong method of selling, right? Set the frame, tell the story, reveal the entry, offer the price, nail the hook, get the decision. It all goes back to being prepared and knowing like you know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. They have to believe that you can do this shit. Your conviction in what you're doing is what's going to sell them that you can do it. Fast. But all that conviction and that confidence comes from effort. Yeah. Look at anyone great in anything. Effort. 
you can see the, the confidence in their face and it was dictated by the effort that they put it into their craft. So then I had that one gym. I just rinsed and repeat that shit three more times, bro. By the time I was 27, I had four fucking gyms. For the other ones, were you doing the same shit, buying out old business? Same exact thing. Really? Do what you got to do until you can do what you want to do. So it, so is the benefit of doing it this way is that you get a good deal on like all this shit and start again? It's already built out. Yeah. All you got to do is come and operate it better. Yeah. It's equivalent to like, like let's say someone that has restaurant experience, right? That knows how to make incredible food and deliver incredible okay. service. Okay. And you have a shitty restaurant with shitty food, right? And shitty service. A better operator can go into the exact same building and run that restaurant way better. The infrastructure is already there. Yeah. It just needs TLC, bro. You What's know what that, I mean? Yeah. But the biggest thing is get experience underneath your belt. You said uh, TLC? Yeah. Tell a loving care. Okay. <laughs> right? So you just got to care about the business because a business is a baby. You know what I mean? So once you, like Elysium, it's a baby, right? So how well you take care of it dictates how big it will grow into. Yeah. Dictates if, if it'll grow into another young LA. Dictates if it'll grow into another Fashion Nova. But the, but the amount of effort you put into how well you take care of it will dictate how big it grows. Mm. A lot of people, they're just in it for the money. Yeah. They're just in it for the profit, right? And eventually what happens when the money doesn't come, they quit, they give up. Yeah. But if you truly it, love it, it and you truly take care of it, doesn't matter how many times you stumble, doesn't matter how many times you fall, you're going to keep going at it, you're going to keep putting time in, you're going to make it better and better and better. And just like working out, bro. Yeah. If you're in it just for the looks and you're not getting in shape, you're going to say, fuck working out. Yeah, that's facts. I'm trying to think. Yeah, my background, my background, I have a course, is with the courage to begin, the, the discipline to endure, victory becomes a matter of time. Yeah. It's my background. It's so real. It's like... But that's you're spitting some you spitting some real ass game right now. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. So qu question real quick, I wanted to ask on the on the personal training shit. So did you when you were making that much, you had people under you? Yeah. So whenever I start <coughs> training, right. So the biggest thing is whenever you create a product, focus on why that person's buying. A lot of yeah. trainers they sell a four pack, ten pack, twelve pack. Bro, you're not gonna change that person's fucking life in a month. You're not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. They didn't get fat and out of shape in a month. They're not going to get in, in great shape in a month. They're not going to lose the weight in a month. The reason people buy personal training is for an end result. You're not going to get the end result in a day, a week, or a month. Okay. It takes a lifetime to build a certain lifestyle. It's going to take at least a year to be able to change your habits, not just help them lose the weight, but build the habits where they can maintain it on their own. Mm -hmm. So when I sold personal training, I didn't sell a 5-pack, 10-pack, 12-pack. Our minimum package was 48 sessions. 48-pack, 96 48, 96, and 144. That was once a week, twice a week, or three times a week. Mm -hmm. There were always 12-month agreements. The reason I did it that way is because my goal is not to make money. My goal is to change your fucking life. The only way I'm going to do it is if you allow me to help you. Yeah, you sold it as that. Yeah. And that's what was able to sell it. Like yeah. You were, you were confident in that, so they didn't even... Okay. But again, it's yes. people can tell bullshit when they fucking see it. 100%. You see what I'm saying? So if you're in it for the money, if you're in it for the sale, the client, the client can tell. You're not yeah. fucking stupid. They can see that you don't care about them. Yeah. So I showed them, like, listen, I, here, we're going we're gonna to gather up your past. We're going to draw from your experiences. And I'm going to teach you how to invest that into your future. So for the first 15 minutes, I would sit down with them. I would just get to know them as a person. I would understand where they're at and how they got to where they're at. Then I would tell them how I'm going to help them get to where they want to be. And then we worked out literally for only about 15, 20 minutes. And within that 15, 20 minutes span, Someone will make a decision to buy training from me. I had an 80% closing ratio. That means 8 out of 10 people that sat down with me spent a minimum of $2,160. Wow. And I was making $80 an hour from the time I was fucking 18 years old and literally until I was 25 when I opened my first gym. So, wow. So, so with that, so when you started getting, so you, how many people are you training yourself and would you like delegate? So I would, would you have other people sell the same thing? So what I would you? do is, personal trainers, they really don't like selling personal training because they don't want to sell, mm -hmm. but if you truly believe in your product and you feel like it's going to change your life and you feel like you can do the shit that you're saying, you should have no problem selling it. You're going to help change this person's life. The reason you feel, people feel bad about sales is because you're trying to sell some shit that you don't believe in, yeah. right? I believe in it, so therefore I can sell it. But how we, we had a system, right? The, the difference between a million dollar company and a billion dollar company is people, process, and products. Okay, they have certain people for certain things. So they develop their people. There are process and system in place, and the product is consistent. And the quality was there, right? Mm -hmm. So I have people specifically for sales. So they would do all the free consultation. They were on salary. And they would get a commission. Mm -hmm. Their job was to sit down and do the, co the consultations. What you were doing. What I was doing. So I would train really. people specifically to sell training. So I had four people working underneath me that would just sell training in four different locations. 
right? And then I had about four to six trainers per location. Their job was just to fulfill the packages that were selling, mm -hmm. do the thing that they enjoyed, right? And the thing that they were good at. And so we had the systems in place and the quality of the product was always consistent. We would have weekly team meetings on personal trainers on how to deliver better service because really at the end of the day, they're not buying a workout because they could easily Google this shit, right? They're buying an experience. Yeah. So our goal when we were training people was to educate, empower, and then equip them to be able to do this thing on their own. We didn't want you to have to continue training with us for the rest of your life. Our goal was to educate you teach you how to work out, empower you to show you that, hey, you can do this on your own, and then equip you with the knowledge and experience underneath your belt where you can go out there and do it on your own. And that's why yeah. we were making a fucking fortune. So what, if I could ask, what were you personally uh, paying, like the personal trainings? The personal trainers were making... What would you pay them, yeah, per hour, I guess? So the clients would pay about $80 an hour, and then we would pay the trainers anywhere from, depending on the experience, twenty to thirty dollars of that, yeah, and then does. about twenty dollars would go towards our operating expense, and we'd make twenty dollars in profit. So business is typically chopped up into a third, right? Usually a third is your overhead, right, to operate the business. A third is is your payroll, and a third is profit. Okay. So out of the eighty bucks, we would net anywhere from twenty to twenty-five bucks, um, depending on the client, depending on the trainer. What was it most amount of clients that you had at your peak of this business? The most amount of, so like I, I'll give you a great example. When we opened our first gym, Fusion Gyms right now is $69 a month, right? Our gym used to be five fucking dollars. Five dollars. And you probably want to go 20. Well, <laughs> how the fuck did you make any money? Yeah. How we made money is through personal training. The goal was that five dollars was just to keep the lights on and pay the bills for the rent. Get, have a conveyor belt of people coming in that wanted to change their life, but they didn't want to spend a tremendous amount of money. Once they came in, we would give them a free session. And then we show them the value of working with a trainer, the value of investing a little bit more in your health, and they would buy training. They'd come in at $5, but by the time they would leave by the end of the week, they were paying anywhere from $160 to $360 a month. See, so, yeah, that's so big brain. Yeah. What you're like, because you can apply this to so many different like businesses, but I like how you like, you generally like, move different than other people, yeah. than like other business models. I hope people like realize that, because like, I have like a younger audience, and I know a lot of them are definitely aspiring to like, do something with their life. They just a lot of them probably don't know what, but like you can apply this shit to like any any industry or business. Like, well, that's why I'm asking certain questions so you can lay it out. Like this shit's crazy. I mean, you're hitting me with something. Like damn. Bro. Like like our first year, bro. The gym literally was five dollars a month. If you scroll down on my Instagram or Fusion Instagram, you'll see literally fucking banners and billboards for five bucks a month. Okay. Yeah. So we that first year, I made my first million dollars when I was 25 years old. The first year, and about 800 thousand of it was from personal training. In one gym. So My, do you, do you the, still run that? The person training shit out of yours? No, so, all right. So, I believe in life. The amount of money you make in life is in direct proportion to the problem you can help solve. Mm -hmm. The problem all personal trainers face is they all have the same problem as me. They want to open their own business. Mm -hmm. So, when we're doing a lot of money, we're doing like 800 Gs a year. Eventually, the trainers, they want to leave. They want to go do their own thing. Like, damn, I want to make the 80 bucks. I want to drive the Lambos. I want to drive the nice cars. Mm -hmm. I want to make it all. But they didn't see the effort that went into running that business. So over time, it was just like trying to fill a leaking bucket. As we get new clients, we'll, clients will leave. Why? Trainers will leave. Some of the clients will leave with them. Hiring great trainers was really hard. It was, the business was incredible for one location, maybe two or three, but it wasn't scalable to 100 locations, which is what we want to do, right? So then I went back to the drawing board. I said, okay, instead of me fighting trainers trying to leave, let me give them a platform so they can actually start their own business inside of Fusion, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone wants to open their own business. At Fusion, you can do that. You pay us a thousand bucks a month. Mm -hmm. You can run your entire personal training business inside of our facility and you keep 100% of the money. Because remember what I told you, for a thousand square foot, 2,000 square foot small little studio, mm -hmm. You're looking at two to three Gs a month. That's before the equipment. They're gonna make five, six grand a month just to be broke. I said, okay, instead of having them leave, let me give them a place to start their business and grow. And every single trainer trains with the soul of an entrepreneur. Because why? They're making all the money. So every trainer at my gym, they keep all the money that they make. And the trainers that we've had at Fusion, dude, they've been there for five years. The, the turn in the personal training industry in the gym business is incredible. I mean, every two to three months, if you go to a gym, you'll see there's new trainers there every month. You know why? Because they don't make dick. Yeah. And they eventually want to go leave and go do their own thing. So instead of letting them leave, I was proactive instead of being reactive. I proactively gave them a place to start their business versus being reactive to them leaving, me hiring new trainers and running around. That business is not scalable. I can open fusions all over the country 
And there's personal trainers all over the country that want to start their own business. Where Fusion, you can do it for free. There's no upfront cost. You don't got to sign a massive lease. It's month to month. You can do it for as long as you want or as little as you like. If you're the right person, we'll give you your first few months free so you can get your traction. We have thousands of members for you still training to. You can market yourself. You can really run a very successful business. So, guys, in life, if you want to make a shit ton of money, mm. find problems and then build a business around that. Yeah. Damn, bro. <laughs> you, you be spinning. Do you be like, do, who do you look up to in terms of like people you listen to or learn from? I mean, bro, I mean, I'm a, I'm a very firm believer in education. A lot of people look at education as a time in life. I look, firmly believe education is a way of life. You have to consistently keep growing in life. You, bro, either you're rising or you're falling. You cannot flow. Kind of like you, bro. Like, look at it like this, right? You have an incredible physique, right? Mm -hmm. Millions of people look up to you. But if you stop lifting today, what's going to happen? Yeah, see, I'm trying to fi figure out that right now. I'm trying to, like, go through the process. That's why I've been trying to build up, like, the clothing stuff. And then I'm hoping to branch out in a few other different things. Obviously, I always would look, but that is a thing, too. Or if, like, what if, like, tomorrow social media was chalked? Yeah. Or for, like, if social media is down for a few weeks, that's instant reflection of how much money I would bring in, which is, it's scary. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to, like, do a bunch of different side things now I'm debating on, which I, I, I definitely need to ask you about. Like, yeah. I want your input on certain things I'm trying to start up. Like, I'm trying to start a Discord. Well, I have a Discord Yeah. with 40,000 plus members, so I'm bringing on some people to try and help me with monetizing it, but, like, again, like, I feel bad sometimes selling things like that because I don't want to be a sellout, but, yeah. again, I'm making sure whatever we do sell it, there's, like, a shit ton of value in it so that it's easy to market and I can actually firmly stand behind it Yeah. because that would just be, you know, good revenue per month, and then if, it's, if the Discord's making me money, then I'll be more involved in it because I have a bit as involved in it, mm -hmm. but I'm, I know people who are making bread off of the Discord stuff, so yeah. I'm trying to, like, put the right pe people in a place for that. Oh, that's like one thing I'm trying to do now or I'm focusing on. Yeah. yeah, the biggest thing is like, at least you're putting effort in, right? So like th the effort that you put in over the last five years got to where you are today. If you stop putting that effort in into your business, into your physique, it's gonna deteriorate. Mm -hmm. You're gonna lose your money, you're gonna lose your physique, you're gonna lose your following. If you stop putting in the things that got you to where you are. So that's how I look at life too. How I look at life is I'm consistently evolving. Because if what I knew could get me where I wanted to be, chances are I, I, I'd already be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? If what I knew could get me where I wanted to be, I would already be there. Mm. So the biggest thing that's missing is I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. Right? So I'm always consistently searching for that information of what I don't know. You're, you're staying open-minded. Staying open-minded. But think of it like this, right, guys? If you had your life to live, Alex, I'm asking you, right? If you had your life to live all over again, right, mm -hmm. knowing what you now know, could you have done with it more than you've done thus far? Yeah. Then that right there shows you that who you are and what you've accomplished is only the very tip of the iceberg of what's possible for you. The only thing that was missing was the knowledge of what to do. Yeah. So if you had this knowledge 10 years ago, you'd be 10 times bigger, yay? Yeah, 100%. Okay, so the life works the exact same way. So if you want to be bigger and you want to do more and you want to accomplish more, go out there and get that information. If you read a fucking book, right, just one book. You can get 20 years worth of information, 20 years of knowledge and experience that's packed into that one book in yeah. eight hours. If you literally just read one hour a day, one hour a day, in one week, you can finish one book. In one year, if you continue that process, you can finish 52 books just by listening to, and you don't have to read. I fucking hate reading, I right? I'm like, bro, now. and I, when I was in high school, I literally slept through all my classes. I was a straight fucking D and F student. Mm -hmm. And all my teachers, my parents, everyone thought I wasn't going to be shit. But I knew that that wasn't just for me. I just didn't like what they were teaching me. Yeah. But when I found the right information, the right books, I was able to go and apply it and get massive results right away. See, in school, they're teaching you theories. They're not yeah. teaching you practical information you can go and apply. If you go out there and read these books, bro, you can literally go, you can read a book on how to build a website on, on, on Shopify. And later that week, and have a website live Drop shipping or That's manufacturing. Thing, I literally talked about this on my story this morning, literally on the way here. I was like, because I, I usually read this like daily stoic thing. I'll post my stories. So I'll just give people advice. Because I'm trying to be more motivating for people and help out a lot of this younger, these younger kids and generation. But like uh, people love talking and thinking about like, oh, I'm going to start reading these books or I'm going to start doing these courses or I'm going to learn this. I'm going to start waking up early. But, but people never apply shit or they never execute on what they want. So I was telling them like, 
I feel like so many of us have like this little voice in us that like yeah. wants to be productive and we'll think of these things like, oh, I should be doing this. I want to do that. And we'll think of it, but then we like make excuses in our head and like we let our, our like fleshly desires kind of take over that and we become lazy and we don't end up acting on it. But if you learn to like actually act on that little voice that like is telling you what you know you should be doing, you, if you don't feel like doing it, if you actually just do it, I feel like it will change your life and you'll end up executing on those thoughts that are going to allow you to be more productive. If you like actually say like, oh, I'm gonna, I want to read this book. You actually fucking read the book instead yeah. of just talking about reading the book. Yep. Or like you actually start waking up at 7 a.m. instead of just talking about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Or like there's so many things for that. It's like, taking those small daily steps, bro. Yeah. You know? There's a there's an old saying that I love, right? It goes, by the inch it's a cinch, by the yard it's hard. Everyone is focused on the yards in front of them. Facts. You know? Like I'm recently doing this uh, this mental toughness program by my boy Andy Priscilla. It's called 75 Hard. I've seen that. Yeah. A lot of people fail it and a lot of people don't even try it because they're focused on the 75 days i'm not focused on the 75 days i'm focused on fucking today mm. i always I, I i know what you're saying you know what i mean i focus just on today i just plan my day out accordingly hey listen i'm gonna drive down and see alex today i need to make sure i wake up and i have at least two bottles of water because it's gonna be a long ride i'm probably not gonna drink when i'm there this what right before the podcast i'm like hey bro you have any water because i know that i gotta finish a gallon of water before the, end of the day if i wait till later in the day I'm going to fucking fail. So I mean proactive, but I'm not focused on the 75 days I'm focused on today. If yeah. you focus on today and you take one step in front of the other, it's not going to happen for you today. It's going to happen day by day. Mm. It's kind of like having an incredible physique. You didn't get there in a day. Go back on your YouTube, right? It was day by day by day by day. The reason a water carves through a mountain is not because it's powerful. It is because it is consistent and it is persistent. Far. You can carve through all your obstacles that you face in your life. It doesn't matter if you don't have money. It doesn't matter if you have the education. If you are consistent mm -hmm. and you are persistent, you can carve through all those obstacles. Just show up every day. That was a fire ass analogy. But I, I agree with that because when I started social media, I had a whiteboard and it had my yearly goal on it. Yeah. On one side and the other side was my daily goal. Yeah. And I would have to recheck the daily goals every day because I would tell myself like, if I keep thinking too much about this long-term shit, it'll become burdensome and my body will just become overwhelmed and I'll shut down. Versus if I take it day by day, what can I do today? It's going to lead me to that long-term goal. Yeah. It's so much easier to accomplish and then inch by inch, you end up getting to that point eventually. So that's why I try to tell people, if you're just like, what can you do in this day that's going to be productive? Whether or not you see the growth of the progress progress right now, it's going to happen oh, eventually. It's going to eventually start you know, getting the ball rolling. You just have to do the same shit or that list, it's hit that list every single day and it's bound to end up growing somewhere. It has to. So that's what I did for my social media shit. It was like post three TikToks a day, go yeah. live, and I would check it off every day. Yeah. And then eventually hit the long term hit the long term goals without even have to having to like think about them. I hit them all every yeah. time. And all the bullshit falls to the side, right? Like all your fears <laughs> fall to the side, all your doubts fall to the side. Like look at anyone that is supremely good at what they do. Look at Steph Curry. When he shoots, he barely even looks at the court. A lot of times he closes his eyes. Because mm -hmm. he's done this shit so many times that what's one more time? And it doesn't matter if there's 10,000 people watching, 50,000 people watching, a million people watching, or is just him on the court by himself. As, as he continues practicing, he just gets better and better. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Mm. Facts. You be spitting fire ass shit. I'm not gonna lie. I, I told forgot. you we're gonna set this room on fire. I know. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot how like you're just so knowledgeable. It's pretty dope. And I hope people appreciate like this knowledge is like, it's it's worth it's like worth money almost because like it's it, the potential that the knowledge has to make you money if you apply it is there. You just have to execute and apply it. You know what I mean? The shit that you're saying. I mean, look at it like this, right? A set of dumbbells that does nothing for the average person makes you millions of dollars. Weird. It's not about the dumbbells and about how you use it. Yeah. Right? It's facts. There's people that can't even lose a few pounds here making millions. Yeah. All because, why? Because you're putting in the effort in. That's it. That's the only difference between them and you is what you've done. Mm. And the difference between me and everyone else is just what I know and not just what I know but what I'm doing. It's common sense and common knowledge what you got to do just not common practice. But that's why most people get uncommon results is because they're doing the common shit. If you want great results, if you want what others don't have, you got to do what others don't do. Others aren't willing to put, put in the work after school, after work. Yeah. Some people are like, hey, Tony, listen, I'm going to start my own business. I don't want to quit my job. You know, or I, I'm going to quit my job and do this. Like, if you really want to do it, bro, you only work eight hours a fucking day. There's 24 hours in a day. That means you have 16 hours of available free fucking time. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing with the 16, what's an additional eight hours going to do for you? 
It's not about what you don't have that's stopping you. It's about what you think you need that's stopping you. If you truly want it bad enough, nothing's going to stop you. Oh, that's true. And what, what, like, I hate the, the whole excuse thing. Or people will see like, people like me and you, and they'll try and hate on it because yeah. they don't have it themselves. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not able to bring themselves to a point to try and, and make put the work in and get to that point. So like, oh, I'm just going to belittle him to make my ego feel better about yeah. being, being shit. But so, when you talk shit about somebody else, it's not a reflection of them. It's a reflection of you. <clears throat> It's called psychological projection. You're projecting your insecurities onto them to feel better about yourself. Facts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, those people that are hating, you'll never see a fucking hater doing better than you. Uh -huh. You'll never see someone doing better than you hate on you because they know what it took to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. They'll see someone like you and they'll hate on you like, oh, you know, he's not as shredded as this guy or he's not as big as this guy. Oh, why do people follow him? The reason people follow you is because of the story you've told and the impact you've had. What you put in is what you get out. Mm -hmm. The reason you're getting so much out of this industry is because of the amount of lives you've impacted. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Don't be jealous of results you didn't get for work you didn't fucking do. Facts. Simple as that. Damn, bro. You're just spitting. I go a lot. I feel like when people be learning to become... I, wish I, I always preach like a really important character, like, trait is to have like self-awareness. Because when, when you're self-aware of yourself, you're able to recognize toxic traits like that and then to fix them. I feel like a lot of people lack self-awareness and that's, that's limiting them for becoming a wealthy or a successful person in life. And the biggest thing is because you're hanging out around a bunch of fucking losers as well. You become a part of what you're around. If you're around the average Joe, you're going to think like the average Joe. If you're around five crackheads, you're going to be the sixth. If you're around five personal trainers, you're going to be the sixth. Mm -hmm. If you're around five people that are getting after it in life, you're going to be the sixth. And sometimes, you know, I'll get this a lot too, like, well, Tom, how do I find these people? You don't find them. They're online, bro. You don't have to physically surround yourself with greatness. You can virtually surround yourself with greatness. Right? Like, yeah. I grew up in the middle of the fucking hood in West Philly. Like, the, the neighborhood that I grew up in was so dangerous that when I was seven years old, I got shot twice mm -hmm. by a stray bullet during a drive-by. Right in the neck. This is what the scar is right here. Wow. That's the kind of neighborhood I grew up in. Literally, right across the street from the projects. Everything around me told me that I should not have been successful. But it didn't matter about the environment that I was in. All that matters what was going on in my mind, right? I saw it for myself. Anything that mind can conceive and believe it can achieve through positive mental attitude. Mm -hmm. What I did was I surrounded myself virtually with Elon Musk. I surrounded myself virtually with the founders of Home Depot, Arthur Blank, Bernie Marcus, Ken Longo. I, found, I surrounded myself with the founder of Starbucks, Howard Schultz. I surrounded myself with Henry Ford. I surrounded myself with these great minds. Every day, I would put on the headphones and I would listen to them talk about how they did it. Mm. And, it, and I, I subconsciously trained my mind to think like them. See, the problem with formal education is they teach you what to think. Self-education teaches you how to think. Yeah. So as I listen to these books and I listen to these entrepreneurs, I listen to their problems and how they overcame it, then I also started become, becoming resourceful and figuring ways around my problems, figuring ways around not having money to start the business. Mm -hmm. So if you don't feel confident in yourself, if you feel like you can't get there, if you can't surround yourself with successful people, it's because you don't have the right mind. Right? You're not, you, you don't have to physically be around Alex to have Alex influence you. You yeah. can virtually surround yourself with Alex. Listen, you can listen, listen to his podcast. You can watch his YouTube videos. And, but that doesn't just go for Alex. It goes for anyone in any field. But you got to want to do the work. You got to want to sit there, shut the fuck up, and listen. listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You need to use them proportionately. Mm. Most people, though, every time someone's talking, they listen with the intent to respond. Like if you're trying to speak game to someone or a young kid, they'll listen, but they want to impress you. So they'll, they'll listen with the intent to respond. Instead, listen with the intent to understand. That's what is this person trying to say? That's what I'm doing this whole podcast. <laughs> so like, just trying to take it all away. Right? So like, listen with the intent to understand. See where they're coming from. See what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Gather up their past. Draw from their experience. Invest that into your future. Birds of a feather flock together. You want to hang around fucking winners? Become a fucking winner. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hang around fucking losers. Yeah. Okay? That's You'll true. never see eagle fly down and hang amongst the pigeons. Mm -hmm. They're too fucking busy doing eagle shit flying around. <laughs> right? You'll eventually see the eagle. If you're an eagle and you fly high too, you're going to see the other eagles up there. It's not lonely at the top. That's what the broke motherfuckers at the bottom say. Mm -hmm. It's not. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. We live hundreds of miles apart. We stay connected, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm here. I live down the street from you. Yeah. But again, birds of a feather flock together. You want to hang around winners? Be a winner. And it doesn't mean you need to win in life. Just have a winner mentality. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? If you're fucking driven, if you're hungry and you put in the time, other great people will see that in you. Like that kid right there, Jimmy, sitting literally right over there, right? Why is he here? Because I see greatness within him. Mm-hmm. Because he sees it in himself. That's why he's here. Yeah. Birds of a feather flock together. I brought him with me because I think he's great and I think he's going to be great. But that belief that I have in him is dictated by his belief in him. I see him hustling every day. I see him working every day. Mm-hmm. So what he puts in, he's going to get out. You see what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. That will eventually blossom for sure. Yeah. That's dope, though. No, I like that. But no, I've been, I've been like, for me, I've been trying to hang around the people who are, because for so long, uh, like even like this goes for anything, even spiritually, like even with God or even not related to that, with people who are better off than me financially. I'm trying to start making sure I connect more with people who I know are more spiritually mature than me or or, or are more successful, make more money than me, because I know that by being around them, I, I will gain in a way I'll, I'll learn something that could allow me to eventually get to that point instead of if i keep surrounding myself with people i've been surrounding myself with i'm bound to not prosper or grow in that way so i'm i'm so open to learning to like for example i met like that one the because i'm trying to learn like a little trading thing yeah. so just like learning from him not trying to get like him to tell me whatever he does but like i want him to teach me how he learned it so that i can learn it so i can apply yep. myself and then i don't have to become relied upon anybody exactly you, know you want to I mean? learn you want to learn how to think and how he does what he does mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then the biggest thing is, guys, is if you're the smartest one you're in your group, you got to find a new group. Facts. And it doesn't have to be physical, right? Like, we live in a virtual world. Yeah. You know what I mean? It could be literally virtual. A lot of people that are on the same path as you, they're going to go to the same places as you. You can connect them with the, at the gym. You can connect with them in the library. You can connect with them in the book show. You can connect them with on forums. They exist. Mm-hmm. Your, your, your goals and who you want to be is not unique to you. You know what I mean? So you truly have to just get after it and you're going to find other people on the same path as you and you can do more together. You know what I mean? The dream you dream alone will always stay a dream. A dream you dream together can become reality. The reason Fusion is what it is, my companies are what they are, is because of the team that I built around me. Yeah. It's because we all have the same vision. If you help enough people get what they want in life, in return you're going to get what you want. Mm-hmm. So find people and see how you can add value to them, how you can help them. In return, they're going to want to help you back. Facts. No, hundred percent. Yeah. No, that's that's how it is. No, because like you've been showing my love to me, yeah. so I want to show my love to you. Like whatever you need me to do, so I'm like, yeah. Because like you. And don't give with the shit. intent to receive shit back. Do not give with the intent like, okay, I did this, I expect this back. Give with the intent just because you want to give. Yeah, and I think the the right people will do the same thing. Yeah. The right people that you surround yourself with, or whatever, if they're a good person, or, or if they have that mindset, they do the same thing back. It's just a, how people should be in the first place, but. Yeah, bro. You should drop like a freaking like mentoring course or something. Maybe one day. I'm not there yet. It's crazy, bro. There's not of like clips that are gonna be made out off of this, and freaking 42 minutes is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I already know. I hope people like like take this and apply. Like maybe listen to it a few times over in case you miss something. Cause like, bro, I, there's so many times even when I listen to stuff and I like I'm like, oh, this is dope, and then I just after that, like the next morning, I wake up and like I just don't take anything from it. And I don't execute or apply it. Like. Take notes, watch it a few times, and like actually try to apply something, bro. So many people are not where they want to be in life, like including me. I, I've even like very well off. Like I'm nowhere near where I want to go yet. So like I'm like opening my mind up to this, this learning so much right now. Like I've been reading like you know Marcus Aurelius, he's a Roman emperor. So yeah. I've been reading meditations yeah. from him, which is crazy. Yeah, it's it's like he was the most powerful, most wealthiest man in the world. One of the most kindest. Yeah, it was you know the most, I mean? like, he was, like, People looked at him as a god. Yeah, he was probably one of the best human beings in history. The yeah. fact that he didn't get corrupted by that much power yeah. and, and never, in his own personal diary, he doesn't even complain. Yeah. Although he had, like, hella messed up shit happen to him. Like, his son was a mess up. I think his wife or something, someone cheated on him or whatever. Like, all the war, the, the struggles and, like, the poverty and the economy. That, like, the fact that he, like, never once complained in his own personal diary and instead, like, was just... I don't know, people like that, bro, it's, it's so crucial to study people like that because you can gain so much from it. It's just free knowledge there in a freaking book. Like, that's what I'm starting to realize. Like, I hate reading. Yeah. I do, but I'm trying to do a little bit by day because I know. Do you listen to books? Back from it. I can probably listen to it a little bit better. But I'm going to put you on, bro. Like, I'm going to put you the fuck on. So, I am a massive advocate for audio learning. I'll explain to you why. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. All right, pretend like we took this entire podcast and we put it on paper. Would it have the same impact as people listening to us? 
No, because the way you say things, I feel like... The peaks and the valleys and how you perceive it and how you listen to it, right? It's kind of like music. If you, you ever read lyrics that are written down to a song that you really like, like, damn, what the fuck? I don't even recognize half these words, but like, this is what they're saying. Yeah. It's because of how you perceive it, the peaks and the valleys, and, and it's all about the delivery, mm. right? So, like, the books, if you're getting a lot of re out of reading a book, you'll get even more listening to a book. But the biggest thing is that we also live in a very fast-paced world, right? We're also on the fucking go. You got to record podcasts. You got to make you know streaming videos. You got to record videos. You got to work out. You got to fulfill orders. You have a shit ton of things to do. But where the fuck do you find the time to read books for hours, right? You don't. You read when it's convenient, yeah. which limits you. Now, you can listen to a book while packing orders. While you can, yeah, you can listen to a book while driving to the gym. You can listen to a book while doing some cardio. You can listen to the book walking your fucking dog. You can listen to a book doing mundane shit, doing your laundry, folding your clothes, cleaning the house, cleaning your car. You can listen to the book 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes here, two hours in a day. In three days, you can finish a book. Mm -hmm. Repetition is the mother of skill. The information without application is the beginning of delusion. A lot of people, they don't apply because they forget it. There's an old Chinese proverb, right? It goes like this. If I hear, I forget. If I see, I remember. But if I do, I understand. A lot of times, they hear it, but they don't really apply it because half the time they're forgetting it. Mm. But if you repeat that process enough, you're going to repeat it, you're going to listen to it over and over, then you're going to start to see it in your life. Then you're going to start to do it. And then that information starts to have meaning in your life. But the yeah. biggest thing is a lot of people, they'll listen to it once and they're going to forget about it. The average person has over 60,000 thoughts in a day. Mm -hmm. You listen to this shit once, it's not going to impact your life. You working out once, is not going to impact your life. Mm -hmm. If you work out only one time a week, you're going to just be sore as fuck. Yeah. Right? Okay, well, listening to a book or reading a book just makes you mentally sore. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to it every day, that's when it starts to have an impact on your life, right? Yeah. It starts to train your subconscious mind. So it's the same exact thing as working out. Eventually, when you first work out, you get sore. You continue doing the workouts. It impacts, one, how you feel on internally. Mm -hmm. and also changes how you feel and look uh, externally. Yeah. But the biggest thing is repeating it, repeating it over and over. Not until you get it right. The difference between a winner and a loser, a champion and an average person, is a champion practices until they can't get it wrong. Mm. 